Hello, welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Florey. This particular build we're doing here is the 132nd scale Trumpeter AV8B Harrier 2. This particular version is the Night Attack. The kits all roughly go together, so if you've got this particular one, it's going to be the same as the new Harrier one that's coming along, and certainly the older, slightly older kit of this one. It's really all in the nose, is the main difference with them all. Um, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to do. We're going to specialise on doing the weathering on this one and the paint finish on it, because it's a nice big kit, so we can really get stuck in with doing some real nice techniques for giving it that dull, flat Harrier type of look. It's going to be a lot of fun to do, so let's get on with it. Okay, so one of the first things you notice when you get the box undone, nice sturdy box, as you'd imagine, okay, is there was a lot of parts. Um, the basic breakdown, if you've ever built a Harrier kit before, is pretty much the same. We've got fuselage hives, one complete wing section on top, um, and so forth and so on. Obviously, because of the scaling of this, it's a bit bigger. You get some nice little touches, i.e. like the engine. Unfortunately, though, Seeing that engine is going to be a bit of a no-no. The only way you can see the entire engine is to have this top wing section as a movable part to come off. Now, if you want to play around with that, that's debatable because actually getting this entire section off isn't going to be a straightforward because of gaps and things like that. Another little option I was playing with was um, this area up here. You've got where these little formation lights are, um, the little slime lines. These are doors that can open up, which you get a limited view of the top of the engine. It is something perhaps we can think about a bit later on. Looking at references, yes, the crews do open them up, the ground crews to check on things, and there is a little bit of workings on the top of the engine that we could detail and make a little bit more. But it's something personal choice we can look at doing. The kit itself, just having a brief run through here on the sprues, as you would imagine, um, this trumpeter, they've gone along, we've got all the riveting details uh, and all the bits and pieces. Nice touches on this, obviously we've got position off ball flaps, which is a real nice one, because normally they don't come with such things. Um, the basics in the box, if you imagine, you've just got a little few extra sprues per kit. Um, they're pretty much standard throughout. The major differences are, is obviously this particular sprue here, um, which is the J sprue in this particular case because it's got the night attack front on it, um, whereas obviously other Harriers, they have very different types. Um, obviously the uh, REF version is completely different on the front. Obviously some of them don't have the little bulge on the top and so forth. So that's your real major difference between all the kits. Apart from that, they're pretty much standard. As I say, great detailing throughout, which is what we'll be taking care of and having a good look at and trying to improve where we can. Um, this is the part which unfortunately we're not going to see much of, but it's the Pegasus engine. Um, obviously, you know, if you know about the Harrier, single engine, and then it vents out through the four uh, nozzles to obviously give us its lift, uh, lift and thrust. There is some nice touches on the top, as I said, something we're going to have to look at as we move through. Um, obviously, this was all bagged to start. I've unbagged it for uh, photographic purposes earlier. Some nice touches sheer amount of weapons we have got loads we're not going to use any of these weapons really um, it's just going to have a very light fix our particular harrier but as I said you're going to have plenty of things for your spare box we've got mavericks here where then we've got obviously we've got retarded bombs free fall bomb slicks things like that so forth and so on we will be using these the sidewinders nice little touch is that we've got a little bag here protecting the front so very nice little thing like that Things we're going to be working with, again, rubber tyres. You've seen one of my recent builds we used then and I showed about scratching them up and making them dull and very nice. We have got a centre seam on the canopy, which is something we're going to have to look at and go through. Um, the front canopy itself doesn't have it, but it's just the main one. So we'll just keep those bags up nicely and stop them getting bashed about. And we'll put them to one side to keep them safe. <clears throat> Little fret that we actually have, photo etch fret, nice because it's a nice little touch because we're using it for the cockpit itself uh, and things like that. So we can use those. So if we just pop that box out of the way. <clears throat> Got a nice little colour sheet here showing which particular markings we want to go for. Um, obviously, here we've got um, the uh, VMA uh, 311. Uh, for their markings there, very nice with the black tail, which is probably the one we're going to be doing, to be honest, because I like things a little bit different. Or we can do VMA um, 542, um, which is a little bit more muted, nice little colour on the tail. Personal choice how you go through these things. Basically, there looks like there's no problematic areas that are going to be a complete nightmare looking at them to start with. But obviously what we're going to do, we're going to build and make our way through. Okay, so we've got to the first parts cut out. Really, this is sort of stage one, the cockpit area ejector seat and getting all those bits together like that. 
Looking through, obviously check your references is your best thing because some of the panels might be a little bit wrong, um, things like that. Certainly at the moment there's no aftermarket bits and pieces for these. But generally looking at it, it's not sort of bad detail. You can probably see on the close-up one that you know, you've know got quite a nice bit of detail going on here and things like that. It's just generally things like instrument panels may be a little bit incorrect, but we're not going to worry too much about those. So what we're going to do, we're basically going to put these bits together. So if we start with the seat, as we usually do with all these things, what we're going to do, we're just going to bring these two halves uh, together. So we've got the normal seat area, you've got some nice locating tabs. Usual thing with Trumpeter, just come along, give them a couple of swipes to make sure that so perhaps some of the locating pins, ejector pin, hole marks, things like that may be a little bit raised. So it's worth just having a little bit of a rub round just to make sure that they're all nicely flush because little things like that can make for little gaps which are quite nasty to look at and then obviously you have a bit of trouble filling and things like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to just pop these together like so, in like that. And then what we do is just come in from the back a little bit of extra thin, turn your extra thin is what we use for the entire of the build. And all we're going to do is just pop a little bit in the backs there, just down in there. And we can just come along and just put a little drop in there. So that one will go in that side. Now obviously watch yourself for gluey marks. The other way of doing it, you can just come along, bit on the brush, just tap the locator pins where it's going to go. And then you should be able to just come along and fit those in. So that's just going to sit in there like so. Actually, without that one is. So what we'll do, we'll just leave that to the side to dry off just for a moment. Tiny bit of glue at the front one. Just to pinch that one off. So there we go, that's the seat base done, just like that. And then obviously, the major of the seat is going to be black with these ones, to be honest. And then what we can do, we can hand brush um, the actual for putting on the, the main colours. So whilst this is a bit wet, normally I wouldn't rush in and do it right now, but we're feeling quite good how this is going. So we can put these sides on as well. So you've got the little locator pins down on the bottom. So that's just going to sit in on that side. In with the other side. <coughs> Okay, then as this is drying off, we can move on to other parts. So we're just going to pop the top bit in as well. So we're happy how that is all on and glued. And just to check to make sure you've got it all okay and it does fit, just to make sure your seat will go in. We'll paint the seat separate just to make it a little bit easier, but we just want to make sure it will fit um, and we haven't got it too close and things. Same with the headrest, we'll paint separately and things like that. So but the top box can go on the top. So we just put a bit of glue on here. Make sure we got it the right way round. That's it. It's a flat area to the front. There we go. That one's just on the top like that. And that's our seat. And obviously we've got headrests and cushions. There's harnesses to go on from that, things like that, but we'll do that after we've painted up. So that's that one done. Now, if we just move those out the way. Now, for the main actual cockpit tub itself, very straightforward, as I say, it's a lot of detail on these, but it's all been sort of done for you already. So what we've got here, we've got rudder pedals to go in. So we're just going to put a bit of glue on the top. Okay, and then they're quite a straightforward push fit in. Gonna go in just like that. Now control column, um, you could probably get in here to paint it afterwards. If you wanted, you can put it in um, now. It really depends on which way you wanna do it. I'm gonna pop it in now so we can just paint it all in one, which will just make it a little bit more easy. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna sit that in. Now the control column itself isn't the best in the world again. Um, it's one of those ones where, you know, perhaps an aftermarket one is going to see. It's a nice big cockpit on the Harrier, so you're going to be able to see in there quite well. So that's not too much of a problem. So that one goes on. So what you can do now, if you wanted to, you can actually put the side panels on as well. So they're just a straightforward couple of locating pins. So what we'll do, hold it very gently touch of glue and let the capillary action zip off down there and glue all that together. 
So we're just getting slightly ahead of ourselves here with the glue and we need it to sort of dry off a little bit. So we just hold that. So I'll put the other sides of the cockpit halves together and the front and back, which obviously the back's just gonna sit on like that, the front, and then we've got a little panel at the front and then we can get some paint. So okay, as you can see, we've got the actual um, tub done now. We haven't got the back on it. Um, there's good reason for that. So what we're gonna do is sort of weather it up and having the back off just makes it a lot, lot easier to do. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some black paint on the go. So what we got, a little bit of flat black XF51. And what we're gonna do is just very lightly pre-shade around the cockpit area. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna spray this neat. So it's got a little bit on the go in there. So we just check our flow. Quite happy. You know, it's one of those things. It's quite a tight area and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we've got these big panel lines running down. We've just done those just like that. Same on the other side, picking out big lumps of detail just in there That's an odd little bit going down on the bottom you know we've got the seat going in there it's going to take up a lot of the room we're not going to be able to see much of it but what we're trying to do is just highlight some of these areas and then what we'll do is you'll see in a moment we'll come back and uh spray these up and it will just give it a little bit of depth and also at the same time there is a method in the madness here what we're going to do is just take a couple of bits of um, the sticky tack uh, which is white tack just attach them to the bottom of these side consoles just like so so we've got one second going on here oops okay just like that little stick just to hold them on and we can just spray these black flat black just like so and what we can do we can stand them out of the way just like that and then what we can do also at the same time we can spray the seat so we've got a little bit of clamping tweezers here just to hold this at the back. So we can just hold this down and just spray this seat. Absolutely everywhere. Just make sure you come in from all the angles so you don't get any shadowing things like that going on so that's the seat done quite nicely so we can pop this down here as well okay and then obviously we've got the instrument panel so what we do with then again just grab a bit more tack <clears throat> like so we we'll just stick this to the back of the instrument panel now there is some gray areas on this but the majority is black so it's going to be easier to pick the gray out uh, afterwards than it will be the black. So that's what we're doing this way. So we're just going to spray all of this. That one's done as well. Okay, so we're all happy. In the actual um, control stick itself, I'm not going to worry about. So what we're going to do, we're going to tip the black back. Just in there. So what we'll do, we've got a cleaning station right here. We'll just do a quick colour change. So just for argument's sake, we're just going to bang some thinners in there. Soft brush. <clears throat> Give that a rub round. <clears throat> just blow this through. Great thing about the cleaning station, it keeps it all in there so you don't get the fumes or the spray and it going absolutely everywhere. So that's why we like using these. So that can go in just like so. And as I say, it's only a quick colour change, don't worry about it too much. Okay. Let me just grab a cloth. Off it in here, wipe out all the nasties you get around the outsides and things like that. Okay, pop the lid on, 
Okay, then what we want is some XF54, which is basically um, the same color as dark gold gray, which is the universal sort of interior color for US cockpits. <clears throat> and I do find XF54 works well, and because it's a Tamiya color, it's pretty easy to shoot. Right, this has had a little bit of thinners in it, to be honest, already, because I was running out of paint, so I've mixed it in just to get it all going. Okay, so we just check our flow, all happy as how it's coming through, then we're just lightly Give an airbrush, the sides, and I don't know how well you can pick up on the, the close-up in there, but you can just sort of see the pre-shading showing through still. Because what this is going to have is a wash afterwards as well. So there we go, that's that one done. Back of the panel. And it's just giving us a little bit of depth to the paintwork. So there we go, that's those two done. We'll come back in a moment when the instrument panel's dried off to finish off those areas. I'll just clean that out a little bit better in a moment. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're just going to let that dry just for a few minutes. We'll clean up the airbrush and then what we're going to do, we're going to give this a very, very thin wash right the way through the copper area. Okay, so as you can see, cockpit's done. We've painted the control column um, with a bit of black in there. Done that. We've painted the seat cushions just khaki, so they can go to one side. And we just picked out the odd little bit um, with a bit of black on there. So what we're going to do now is just give this a very, very light wash. Now, obviously, you could use um, something like the Pro Modeler's wash to do it. But because it's just the tiniest little area, what we're going to do, take some thinners. We're probably taking half a mil of thinners just like that. Got a clean brush, we're just going to take one brush full into the thinners and give that a good mix. So what you end up with, you can probably see on the close-up, is something like dirty thinners. And then all we're going to do, let it clean, all we're going to do is just lightly spray the areas. Now what we want to do, we don't want to flood it completely, but we want it to be wet. And because it'll be wet, it will all sort of run around and the capillary action will take care of a lot of things and it should all stay relatively nice. So what we do, we just clip onto the bottom, just check our coming through. All we're going to do is flood it right the way over the top, just like that. In from the other side, okay, and leave it. Let that dry off. Don't touch it or anything. So if you touch it, what will happen is because it's all thinners, the paintwork you've already got on there is likely to sort of be melting now and you'll come along, touch it, and before you know it, you've made a right mess. So obviously we're going to get in these sides. Okay, and we just spray these down. You see it short, sort of short, stabby squirts. Okay, let that dry, away you go. And that's how you do it. And then when that dries, hopefully it'll just give a nice little shadowing effect to all the bits and pieces on there. So if we just blow that out just down in there, get rid of that. There we go. Okay, that lid can go back on. What it'll do also, it will sort of give us a more grimy, weathered, dirty look to it all. And that's something we're after. We want this particular build to be sort of grimy, weathered, very sort of dusty and flat looking, um, as Harriers do. So that one's done now. So over here on the instruments, obviously um, they're not exactly as you would imagine instrument panels to be, how they all are. So what you can literally do... If you get some grey, um, I know a lot of people use white and things like that, but I prefer to use grey paint. Then all you do, grab a cocktail stick, using your lid part of it, something like this here. Okay, and then all you do, you can come along just like this. If we bring you a little bit closer on the close-up camera, okay, you can literally just pop along and just touch the tops of switches and knobs and things like that and pick that out individually. Now obviously you could then come along and do some dry brushing over the top but I like to do it this way because it keeps it nice and neat and I'm going to do them all grey and then what we'll do we'll have a look around and perhaps we'll make some of them red and different colours but we'll put that over the top. This is a very clean neat way of doing these and obviously it gives them a nice little stepped edge to them as well. But really it's keeping it neat and so you can even do flat ones just like that so there you get you can just pop around and do those so we just do little guys just like that 
just like so, and then you can fit them in. But what we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit of white just down in between um, a little bit of the pro models. We'll do that when that dries off, just to give them a sort of dusty look around the switches. So we'll just do exactly the same on the other side. Camera focuses in, there we go. Nice big blob up there, one there, there. In. Okay, so you're just sort of working your way around all the switches and components. And as I say, we know some of them are going to be red and various colours. And as I say, if you've got good reference material, you can go around and spot the ones you want to do. But say by doing it just like this, with a on a cocktail stick, you've got a little bit more control over than what you would have with a brush. So there we go, we just let that dry off. We can do the same for the control stick on the inside, but obviously it's still a little bit wet, as you can imagine going on in there. So we'll let that dry off and we can move on with it. Same thing you can do, obviously the ejector seat, you can sort of detail that up a little bit and we can do some dry brushing, um, but we'll show you that in a moment. So what I'm gonna do, once this cockpit is all together, I'm gonna go around and dry brush it all out. The other bit as well, we were talking about is the instrument panel now obviously it's all black when you look at the references obviously it's not all black there is things so you can use this cocktail stick technique for painting so you can literally just come along like down these parts down here and then you can use the the point of the cocktail stick to show and exactly where you want to go another way of doing this is another little technique i use which is capillary action is where it's very wet and it flows itself as it wants to go around but there we go we can paint this one all up and get in between uh, all the little switches it's just a little bit around here up here at the HUD area so we're going to go around and do those um, there is decals for doing this but really at the end of the day it's in the powered down position so what we're going to do once we're all done we're going to put a little bit of clear uh, gloss in these little uh, the, the uh, multi-function displays so it looks like they're powered down there again we're going to use the cocktail stick for these switches up at the top here to pick them out as well so I'll get on with those bits Okay, as you can see, cockpit is now all done. Uh, the seat's in, it's a bit of a tight fit to be honest. And you know, really the detail isn't too bad. You've got some nice side paneling and things going on there. Instrument panel's okay. All right, you know, you could replace it with a resin one if you wanted to, and I'm sure the resin guys will come out very, very soon with lots of them. But at the moment there isn't anything available, so we sort of stuck with the cockpit part. But there we go, all done, nicely taken care of. The other thing we've done at the same time because of the way it all sort of fits together yeah, is the actual uh, wheel well. This front wheel well, um, as you can see on the close-up, goes in uh, at the back and it tells you obviously to install it now. Now we've got the main undercarriage part here. And to be honest, all there is this little locating pin down here, you see on the close-up, this one by my finger. That's the only thing that holds the actual undercarriage in. So it will then come along, fit in there, holds in there like that. It's not the strongest join you've ever seen. And obviously at the top of the close-up, you can see that little, uh, the activator at the top there. It's obviously going to be a little bit of support, but it's going to be sort of pretty much useless. Um, it's not too bad. It's got a little bit of sturdiness, but the main problem we're going to have is normally, as you know, we like to put the undercarriage on last as fittings and things like that. Well, with this one, it, you know, unless you're going to cut into this, you're going to have to install it now. Now you can do that, spray it up, put it all in there, mask it all around and you'll be absolutely fine and then that way later on you can unmask it and you're all done personally and what i'm going to do is fit it afterwards which means i'm probably going to have to take a nick out of this little one down here i'd slot it in a little bit of resin plenty of glue and hopefully it'll all hold and weld in place so that's that one done and really what we can do then install the cockpit as you can see we've done the black areas on the front here and things like that a little bit of gray on the sides of the cockpit tub literally will just come along and uh, fits in job done very very nicely so we're all happy with that the main thing we're thinking about at the moment uh, if we just move those out of the way is the engine now the engine itself the pegasus engine is quite an icon um, it's very very nice the detailing isn't too bad at all and with a little bit of lead wiring and things like that we're actually thinking that we could make a very nice display model out of it two problems that we've got with this one though obviously if we have it as a separate item which will be a nice way of doing it 
what will happen is we'll have somehow have to remove this fan system on the front to fit to the engine and just have the air scoop. Now that's not too much of a problem where you can just chop this off and put it in. But then if you wanted to have, as I would ideally have it, is basically showing the engine off to one side with the nozzles super detailed up on a trolley and then the Harrier with nozzles and the fan blade. So we'd have to get hold of another fan blade, either make one, scratch, build one, cast a new one. But the same with the nozzles, that's a lot of work. So really it's not a totally viable option at this time. The other one we're thinking of doing is perhaps we install the engine into the, the fuselage itself which will be something like this okay and then literally the wing section will be a loose fit so you can have it just like this no problem at all show people all that nice work you've done with the engine. Two little problems with that. Firstly, there's a lot of open area down there. You're gonna to have to detail it to make it look right. Otherwise, you're gonna have a nice detailed engine with not a lot running around it. So we'd have to put ribs and formers and things like that in there. Not too much of a problem. And if you wanted to go to town and detailing it, you'd be absolutely fine to do with that. But really a little bit too much more work for what we want to do on this build. The other way is to have, perhaps have some poles and have it as a loose fit above to show it like an exploded type of diagram so you can see it there again quite nice but because of the way the wing section is you're gonna to have to get your head down low to be able to see inside it and things like that third option which is my preferred option at the moment is that basically the section will go on just like this and we open up on the close-up you can see here these little lighting areas now the thing with these is as you see on the close up, you've got these two panels right here. Beam runs down the middle. We take, cut these open, have them off as a loose fit, and then the engine detail on the top of this area here will be nice and detailed, and we can make a little blanking plate, and I've got some reference photos for doing that. So it'll be just enough detail to be able to see the top of this part of the engine here. Okay, you're not gonna see the back workings and all the rest of it, but it'll be enough to show the top. And then that way, it will just be something else to draw your eye to the model when you're showing it off, that people see, oh, a bit of open there, a bit of silver inside, because there's obviously a lot of piping and things like that. We can do it with lead wire. If you've seen the Chinook build, we could scratch build some piping out of plastic, things like that. So little things. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut open these two panels here, have them as an open fit. They hinge from the middle. Don't be um, get it the wrong way around where they hinge from the outside. They actually hinge from the middle and lift up. Um, and then obviously they can lift up independently one at a time, or obviously both. So we'll have them in the open position. So because of all of that, what we've actually got is the engine. Now, obviously what we're going to do, we're gonna put it together, all is the instructions, and then what we're gonna really worry about is say, is this top area up here? Now, say, got some reference photos I'll go through with you later, but we can go around with a little bit of lead wire and these guys just down here. We've got these parts here. They're quite detailed, they go together quite complicated, um, and then we can get them on and hopefully, as I say, a bit of painting, bit of lead wiring around, a little bit of scratch building, things like that. We can make this into quite a focal point on the actual model. The main problem we have, unfortunately, and it's my first real grouch with the kit, we've got some nasty ejector pin marks here and here, and it's the same on the other side. We've got them here and here that are gonna to have to be taken care of and taken out because it's one of those things, everybody looks down big intakes. Two ways of doing it. Obviously you could pop along with a little bit of filler and pop some filler on there and do it like that. Um, they're not too deep. They're enough to be a pain, um, to be honest, but they're not too deep that you probably couldn't sand them out. So I've got some of these thinner sanding sticks which have basically been chopped down. And what we can do, we can get in there and hopefully we can just sand them lightly out. So if I just do this one to show you that they will come out. So if we do it that way, And these little sanding sticks are great for this type of work because they don't end up doing too big an area. So we just go around that side. <clears throat> okay, in like this. And then obviously we'll go down through the grits and use other sanding sticks and things like that, just to polish that all out. But that's basically how we're going to do it. The camera refocuses, there we go, that one's gone. So there's a little bit of time needed for that. Now, the actual engine section itself, as I said, we're gonna build it as a whole and not worry about it too much. So really gonna follow the instructions of it all going together. It's pretty straightforward. It's a nice exploded diagram. There's lots of little parts. We'll just take your time going through them. And what we'll do, we'll come together at the end of this, and then we can really sort of start moving on with fitting this in. Once we've got this in, we can then have a look at how we're going to fit with the top of the wing, detail it up and things like that and move on.